The question Marvel or DC is something that has dominated the comic book world for over half a century. Ever since Marvel's resurgence in the early 1960s, comic fans have often been made to pick a side as to which company they prefer. Do you choose the side of Spider-Man, The Avengers, X-Men and The Fantastic Four? Or Batman, Superman, The Justice League and The Teen Titans? And regardless of which era of comics you fell in love with any of these characters, this competitive rivalry between Marvel and DC has always been around in some form, even today where the battles have moved on from the pages of graphic novels to the big screen. It's no surprise, therefore, that these two companies have engaged in a handful of crossovers and versus comics in the past, with stories such as 1996's DC vs Marvel, 2003's JLA Avengers, and even the late 90s Amalgam crossover immediately springing to mind. However, when it comes to crossover comics between these two companies, I honestly don't think you can top the original, 1976's Superman vs The Amazing Spider-Man. Now, this non-canonical adventure between the two companies' flagship heroes tells a fascinating tale both on and off the page. And in this video, I want to dive into the real-world history behind this story and look at just how Marvel and DC were convinced to put their respective flag bearers head to head, and how this adventure between the Man of Steel and the friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man paved the way for the future of both Marvel and DC Comics. The comic book industry has always been built off fan engagement and participation. From the very beginning of superhero comics coming to existence, engaging with the readers has always been a crux for these types of stories, whether it be through the stories themselves, the letters pages, fan votes, contests, or other things found in the pages of the comics. This had especially become commonplace by the early 1970s, with Stan Lee going as far as to state that receiving fan mail was one of the most exciting things that ever happened to us. With each new letter, they got to know us better and what was more important, we got to know them. We learned what they like, what they didn't like, what they wanted to see more of and less of. After a while, I began to feel like I wasn't even an editor. I was just following orders. Orders which came in the mail. It's no surprise, therefore, that this strong loyalty and devotion to the worlds of both Marvel and DC would result in deep rivalry between each company's respective fan bases. As one fan noted in Reed Tucker's book Slugfest, in the 70s, I was a DC guy, and I hung out with a lot of Marvel guys. It's like sports fans, you're going to pick on each other. We got picked on because even our house ads were kind of silly. This heated animosity between the two fan bases began to boil over into comic book conventions, and it was at the 1970 comic art convention in Manhattan, New York, that these feelings would evolve into quite a unique question. You see, this con held a panel featuring editors from both Marvel and DC, and during the Q&A section, a young fan stood up to ask them both a very simple yet complex question. Hey, why don't you guys do a comic where Superman meets Spider-Man? Now, you're probably expecting this to be the moment where the two editors sit there stunned, baffled that neither one of them had ever considered such a genius idea. In reality though, this wasn't the response that they got. Instead, the editors simply laughed and then explain to the young fan about how copyright law and bureaucracy prevents these such things from ever happening. Historian Mark Evania, who was in attendance at this panel, described how this poor kid was humiliated, basically treated like he'd asked the stupidest question in the world. It was one of those, oh you stupid fans, don't you understand how this business works? However, while those at Marvel and DC laughed off the idea of a crossover in 1970, the building blocks for what would eventually become 1976's Superman vs Spider-Man began to fall into place only a few years later, and from quite an unlikely source. You see, in the early 70s, Marvel were attempting to adapt the classic 1939 MGM musical The Wizard of Oz into a graphic novel, only to discover that their competitors at DC were already developing the exact same thing. Eventually, the two companies realised that releasing two separate Wizard of Oz books would hurt the other's sales, so instead they simply decided to co-produce the comic together, resulting in 1975's MGM's Marvelous Wizard of Oz. 
This marked the first collaboration between the two warring companies, and began to ease the tensions between them. Now, aiding this was David Obst, a literary agent who worked with Stan Lee to produce a number of hardcover books about his time at Marvel. During his time representing Lee, though, Obst happened to run into Howard Kaminsky, the head of Warner Books, DC's sister company, and the two began talking about the possibility of actually doing a book together with Ob suggesting the idea of Superman vs. Spider-Man. Kaminsky was convinced, and pitched the idea to the DC executives and editors, whilst Obbs, with the aid of Marvel's then editor-in-chief Roy Thomas, convinced Stan Lee of the idea. With both parties now formally on board, the stage was set for what would become known as the Battle of the Century. Superman would face off against Spider-Man. With the concept now decided upon, the two companies had to agree on the creative team that would bring this comic to life. To keep things fair, it was agreed that Marvel would provide the penciler and the colorist, while DC would deliver the writer, the inker, and the letterer. Ironically, DC's choice in writer, Jerry Conway, had a storied history at Marvel, taking over the Spider-Man title from Stan Lee in 1972, before jumping ship to DC in 1975. Conway proposed that Ross Andrew would draw the book, as he'd worked with Conway on his Spider-Man run and was the current Amazing Spider-Man series artist, with DC editor Carmine Infantino pushing for Andrew as it would mean he wouldn't be working on Marvel's best-selling title during this process. Andrew was subsequently brought on board alongside Inca Dick Giordano, and with these roles now decided, the conversation shifted to the actual story that would take place within this comic book. As you can imagine, this is where things began to get tense, as both Marvel and DC's executives didn't want to allow their competitors' characters to outshine their own. As David Obst recalls, So we sit down and we can't get two sentences into it when both sides are already screaming at each other. The one quote I remember someone saying is, Are you fucking kidding me? If Superman ever hit Spider-Man, he'd knock him past Jupiter. In an attempt to keep both sides happy and prevent further arguing, Roy Thomas was appointed consulting editor of the book, essentially serving as a mediator between Jerry Conway and the editors at Marvel and DC. But still, coming up with a way to keep the versus tagline and also make it a fair fight proved to be challenging, especially since the power level between Peter Parker and Clark Kent differed so wildly. Jerry Conway took this very much as a challenge though, as someone that had worked on both Superman and Spider-Man, he understood the strengths of each individual character, and how to make them work both alongside and against each other. He noted that, from a realistic point of view, a Superman vs Spider-Man fight would last about two seconds. I always try to see the humour in these characters and these situations, so to me, the idea of having Spider-Man fight Superman there are ways to fix it so that it can happen, but you can have so much fun with the absurdity of it too. Conway's story attempted to find that balance between absurdity and spectacle. The plot would see the two heroes team up to fight Dr. Octopus and Lex Luthor, but upon their first meeting they would, of course, have a misunderstanding and fight. Compromises were made throughout this process though. It was eventually decided that both heroes would get equal screen time throughout the comic, the story wouldn't be set in either the Marvel or the DC Universe, instead a hybrid world that contained both New York and Metropolis, and the now iconic cover art was redesigned a number of times to ensure that Superman and Spider-Man both had equal presence. It was certainly a minefield to attempt to navigate through, but Conway and co seemingly managed to execute it. Marvel and DC were both somehow kept happy, and so in January 1976, it seemed like the impossible was finally realised. This monumental comic book event finally hit shelves in the first week of January 1976, retailing at a staggering $2, eight times the price of a regular comic book at the time, and released in an oversized format of 10 inches by 13 and a half inches. Just from its size and price tag alone, Superman vs The Amazing Spider-Man was made to feel like an immensely huge deal. The first page of the comic saw two editorials written by Stan Lee and Carmine Infantino, both commenting on the historical nature of the comic you're about to read. As Infantino noted in his column, comics which usually reflect history may, in this one momentous undertaking, 
Proof detente can be more than theory. In the backdrop of international conflicts that seemingly have no sign of resolution, these two fierce rivals in the comic book world were putting aside their differences to give both of their respective readerships something truly special. Only a handful of years before the idea for this book was conceived, Marvel and DC were still actively stealing writers from one another and attempting to sabotage the rival's books, and now here they were working on and producing a book together. If Superman vs Spider-Man was a success, their relationship could reach new heights and lead to further crossovers and collaborations, but if it failed, then we'd probably never see anything like this ever again. It's not hyperbole to say that a great deal was riding on this comic being a commercial success. Upon its release, Superman vs Spider-Man sold over half a million copies, and received a second printing not long after its initial release though it is likely that the book may have sold even more copies had it not been for its costly price and the oversized format. Regardless though, to call it anything other than a success would be unjust, and Marvel and DC were both happy enough with how the book was received to work together again in subsequent years. In 1981, for example, not only was a sequel story released, but the two companies also teamed up for a Batman Hulk crossover in DC Special Series issue 27. And then most notably in 1996, they teamed up once again for arguably the most well-known crossover in DC vs Marvel, a four-issue series which pitted the most popular heroes from both companies against one another, with readers deciding who would win each battle. And while it's probably this story or the Amalgam comic series that came after it that first comes to mind when I talk about classic Marvel DC crossovers, I do think it's important to highlight the significance of the very first, and how Superman vs Spider-Man defied all odds and made the dreams of comic book fans come true. This comic was very much a trailblazer in many ways, bridging barriers between not just comic book universes, but rivaling companies and copyright, all to deliver a story that would otherwise only have happened in the wildest imaginations of its readers. As a story itself, I think Superman vs Spider-Man is a fascinating one-shot brought to life by a writer who understood both of these characters better than almost anyone, and balanced them in such a way that made them feel at home with one another. But as a moment in time and as an event, I think it's actually one of the most important moments in all of comic book history, forever changing the landscape of the medium and proving that these types of stories were in fact possible. It's safe to say that Superman vs Spider-Man was an amazing spectacle for fans back in 1976 and is still an amazing spectacle for fans today. And I think given the amount of hard work and compromises it took on both sides for this story to ever see the light of day, it's important to acknowledge its legacy and significance as an incredibly monumental and groundbreaking story that changed the way we perceive both Marvel and DC Comics all the way up to today. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you did, please make sure to leave a like on the video and leave a comment down below as well. Let me know your thoughts on everything we talked about in today's video. I can't wait to hear what you have to say as always. If you're new to Owen Likes Comics, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the notify bell next to it so you never miss another new video. And if you enjoyed this video, there should be some others on screen right now that you might also enjoy. If you want some more of me, you can follow me on Twitter, just at OwenLikesComics. And if you want to help support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash OwenLikesComics. There'll be a link in the description. But that's all for me. I will see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching. And until then, take care and keep reading.